The Giro d'Italia has entered the decisive phase and you can watch it live and on demand each and every kilometre on GCN+. It was all smiles as everybody turned up under the sunshine, at least the dry weather prevailing throughout most of the day on stage 17 of this year's Giro. Mark Cavendish with an opportunity, Jonathan Milan too. It was set to be a day for the sprinters, but they'd have to watch how the breakaway formed on a flat day, with a lot of it actually downhill from Pergine Valstugana all the way to the finish in Caorle. The Giro d'Italia leaving Trentino and heading to the Veneto. A change of direction at Lido di Jesolo and a complicated run in in the end with a few twists and turns. A long day at 197 kilometers. Breakaway went away very easily. They were wondering if there would be a fight or not. Michael Matthews thought about it and tried. Lucas Pustelberger too. But in the end it was Leeson, Sevilla, Champion and Quarterman who got away. They'd never really be given much rope though. The sprinters teams making sure that it would be that day. Matthews asking Milan why he wasn't allowed up the road. Milan considering him too much of a threat. At the intermediate sprint, there was a fight among the breakaway riders. And then behind Milan would more or less make sure of the Maglia Ciclamino as long as he stayed on his bike until Rome. But would he get another chance to win a stage? The riders were heading past Venice and onto the coast. The sprinters' teams controlled for most of the day, and in all reality, there was not much action on the road. The four breakaway riders would fight. Two and a half minutes, though, the maximum gap. When it came down to next to nothing with 22 kilometers to go, it would be the 27-year-old Belgian, never a winner of a bike race as a pro, Senna Leerson, who would give it one final go. Alpacin de Koenig with a sprinter waiting behind, but with their man holding off the peloton until around five kilometers to go. He'd then be caught, GC teams, including the Ineos Grenadiers, keeping their riders safe until three k's to go. And after 192 kilometers in the breakaway, it was all down to the peloton once again. Into the technical part, and it would be Dare Sam who would take it up around the corner. Jaco Alulo would work well for Michael Matthews. A few sprinters getting distanced and boxed in. But the super teamwork into the final corner for both the Australian and the Dutch teams doing the business. Michael Matthews launching from a way out. Dainese following his wheel. Again, Milan in the wind and coming fantastically close. And once more, we'd have a very, very tight finish. Yet another photo in a sprint finish. Three riders this time to the front. And it would be Milan who'd just be beaten by Dainese in an Italian derby to the line. First, second, well, first in the end. And this is why. Matthews with a super effort, mixing it with a big thick leg sprinters. Dainese and Milan, there wasn't much to separate them, about tyre width in the end. And Alberto Dainese, a rider from the Veneto, in the Veneto, a winner. He looked happy about it as well. There's him, have had the jersey at this race, they've got a stage win now too. Alberto Dainese for the second season in succession. A sprint winner at the Giro d'Italia. Dainese Milan Matthews with Bonifacio and Consonni in the top five. The Maglia Rosa still on the back of Geraint Thomas. He'll wear it on his birthday. Will he keep it at the end of the day? He has an 18 second lead heading into stage 18. The stages 18, 19 and 20 are the decisive ones for the GC with Roglic still there at 29 seconds too. Milan's done all the hard work as far as the Ciclamino's concerned. He now has to work hard to make sure he doesn't miss the time cut and finish the Giro d'Italia. He leads by almost 100 points from Derek G. On to stage 18 then, another big mountain test. Shorter on distance this time at 161 kilometers and heading to the Val di Soldo. An early climb, a first category climb after a fight for the breakaway and then the odd lump and bump before another period of gradual climbing. And then they come again. Several climbs to the finish line, real terrain for attacking riders, 
and a chance for the Giro to be won or lost as well. All roads still lead to Rome, but it's a big detour through the mountains before we get there. Three massive days coming up, and they're all live and on demand on the home of cycling on GCN+.